This is the Swiss knife. This is the one gadget you need in your pocket to conduct all your tasks. The popularity of the Civ90 comes from the combination of uh, firepower, mobility, and also armor protection. There is not one year where we have laid down the pen from the specification of the Civ90, constantly updating the capabilities to stay ahead. The Mark IV is the latest generation, the fifth generation of Civ90. We set out to be ahead of our competitors when the next program comes in with the new set of requirements. That's the way we have worked since the original development of the Mark Zero. It all began in uh, the midst of 90s uh, with the Swedish development of the CV-90, uh, where I must say the Swedish FNV, the Defense Material Administration, had a very progressive way of looking at it. They actually gave us seven prioritized requirements. The seven requirements were capability requirements, prioritized uh, from one to seven, where number one was mobility, number two was anti-armor capability, number three was anti-aircraft capability, and number four was protection. So those first uh, four capability requirements are something that we're living on uh, even today. But it also means that all CV-90s that have ever come out of this production facility has a basic anti-aircraft capability, which is quite unique, actually. So in terms of the prioritized requirements, mobility was the highest priority. So Stridsforo 9040, which is the nomination in Swedish for the IFV and the Mark Zero, I must say it's soft soil mobility in perfection. The seventh requirement was a growth requirement. And what it means is that they wanted the, all five variants for the original development to be developed at the same time, to have a modular platform. That means we have a very easy to come to new variants, which also history has shown. All of these are still in service and are going now into refurbishment for a prolonging its life. The Norwegian customer came in with some very demanding requirements in terms of firing on the move, night capability and protection or survivability actually. And also they had a full competition which we won with all contemporary Western IFVs at that time. And uh, they had very high requirements in mobility area. I started my experience with the Civ-90 back in uh, 1998 as a commander trainee. The popularity of the Civ-90 for the Norwegian Army comes from uh, reliability. It's a vehicle that we can trust without a large logistical organization supporting it. I can refer to my experience during operation in Afghanistan. Mobility, uh, armor protection and firepower. All of those three together made the CV-90 a force multiplier. The mobility could take us to positions uh, where the enemy didn't expect us. We could surprise him and also we could take more risk because of the, uh, the armor protection. And uh, most of all, when we got into uh, favorable uh, combat positions, we had the firepower to actually inflict the enemy and uh, succeed our operations. By having control of the entire vehicle, both the turret and the chassis, it comes with, I would say, foremost two advantages. First of all, we have control of an entire fault chain in terms of precision of the main armament. And secondly, we also have greater opportunities for technology transfer and uh, industrial cooperation. Switzerland and Finland had IFV requirements as well. And part of their requirements made us go to digitizing the vehicle which gives you means to integrate third-party systems in an easier way. It also means that we can present information from the control system into the information system to maximize the effect of the vehicle and reduce the workload for the crew. The development for the Mark III, from II to Mark III, was in a very, very big step in capability. Foremost in survivability and lethality, I would say and the delta was extremely high from the Mark II in terms of the caliber. They had a 35mm slash 50mm super shot. 
They wanted airburst munition. They wanted a fully integrated defensive aid suit. They wanted a fully integrated battlefield management system. This was the first vehicle in the world that had a sensor-based protection deeply integrated into control system and information and BMS system. My name is uh, Jacob. I'm a master gunner on the CV-90. My experience is, uh, reaches back to 2006, where I was part of the implementation in Denmark. I have trained uh, commanders. I have deployed as a master gunner with an armored infantry corps and uh, basically worked with the CV-90 for 10 years now. Well, the CV-90 has many capabilities, but the ones I could highlight is of course, the, the firepower, the accuracy, and, uh, and the mobility of uh, the whole system. Especially when we uh, deployed to uh, Afghanistan with, uh, with my corps, the CV-90 turned out to be a, a battle winner. Uh, the adversaries soon learned to respect the CV-90, and every time it turned up, they either broke the engagement or avoided to go into one. Mine protection wise, this vehicle was to a totally complete new standard than what we have ever seen before. Actually, the AEP 55, which sets how you should test or trial mine protection on vehicles, was actually built around the qualification of the CV 9035 in Holland. With the new Norwegian requirements came also a set of requirements for a family of vehicles. So we produced five different variants for Norway. IFV, Command and Control, a Reconnaissance, Combat Engineer and a multi-role vehicle. The delta in the requirements set I would say was foremost in the electronic architecture. So we have a third generation electronic architecture in the, the Mark 3B which uh, makes us NATO secret compliant. We have uh, GVA compliance, and also means that we can do target sharing, where one vehicle goes hot with its sensors and distributes target locations to the rest of the vehicles, which then can engage. The third generation electronic architecture also supports the integration of UAV and augmented reality and other uh, semi-automatic and automatic decision support systems for the crew. The Mark IV is the latest generation, the fifth generation of CV-90. We have done an internal R&D program to be ready for the new customers coming in. And we have done foremost two things. We have done upgrades to the drivetrain, and we have the latest or fourth generation electronic architecture. The drivetrain itself means that we're now qualifying the 37 ton CV90 with a new Scania engine and the latest upgraded X300 heavy duty transmission. That means you have an additional two tons of payload for the end user to utilize. We also now have active damping in our base offering for the, for the chassis. That enables active vehicle dynamics, which means you can have a more stable platform, you can have higher or increased terrain speed, and we also reduce the life support cost of the vehicle even further. The fourth generation electronic architecture makes sensor fusion and sensor data fusion much more effective. We come in with machine learning algorithms. We have uh, artificial intelligence possibilities. You have a lot of possibility for autonomous support for the crew. It also helps us with uh, the support of augmented reality, 3D map data and so on without lag. So it's also good for the future growth in that sense. We nowadays have the shortest lead time from the start of a production or a contract to actual IOC in operations capability. To further shorten our lead times towards the customer requirements with IOCs, we have also modernized our production facility and methods here at BAE System Magnus. Here at BAE System Heglans, we have a very long history, more than 50 years, of designing and producing combat vehicles, such as main battle tanks, all-terrain vehicles, and the famous CV-90. 
our dedicated and committed personnel, together with the great teamwork we have here at BA System Hangar. So not only the company as such, but also together with the feedback that we get from our users. We are very proud to say we deliver world-class capabilities for those who protect us. And I'm very, very proud to be part of that.